uh, fix my tie because I'm about to have an intellectual moment. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Professor Atelstan Fitzgerald Holder, the first here again to discuss something that is a little unorthodox, outside the realm of science, basically pseudoscience, ironically. It is, is something, it is not actually unorthodox within the context of things that are unscientific. It is a sensationalistic um, pseudoscience, that's the irony, but it's unscientific within the context of, you know, looking at things from a scientific perspective. And today's discussion is um, synchronicity and serendipity, right? And I'm assuming most of you all know what synchronicity is. Synchronicity is basically a cascading chains of events in succession that generally works out. It's having basically somewhat semi-preconceived notions of an of a end result of a scenario and it, the scenario playing itself out in your favor in a kind of optimistic favor you know whether the concept or the all these you know these personal ideologies you have whether you conjure conjured it up up or not why am i struggling to articulate myself and then you have um serendipity which is primarily the same in its initiation stages where you have this cascading chains of events in succession you know like the laws of physics it's almost as if it's, a, it's, a, it's an anomaly in the in the laws of physics you know we have these we know we know things we know there's an anomalies in on in, in the laws of physics on a quantum uh, molecular level quantum mechanics level how these um these um neurons and protons how they how they operate you know they they their inconsistency some of these things only appear when the conscious observer is observing these entities but we're not going down there we're looking at the superficial superficial aspect of um, pseudoscience, one primarily synchronicity. So serendipity is the same, you know, in the initiation stage. It's a cascading chain of events, but it always works out in a kind of polarized way. It's, the end result is always a, in a, it goes in a skewed direction, unanticipated end results, but it tends to work out in your favor in some other way. And here's an uh, here's a here's an here's a, here's, a, here's, a, here's an example and an analogy. It's like you you came to Hollywood. To become a movie star and you end up a professional basketball player that's one form you know, right that's a that's a um, that's probably a poor example of uh, what serendipity is when synchronicity is when you know the, again the cascading chains of events now we run into a dichotomy you know because from a scientific perspective these ideas like synchronous but first to begin the term synchronicity was coined first by uh uh come on man come on man or swedish physicist Carl Jung he first coined the term synchronicity I think in 19 I think it's 58 don't hold it against me you know I'm not precise with numbers but the idea existed long before him you know he helped put the concept into perspective he coined the term synchronicity and serendipity was another another concept coined by another guy and I forgot his name but then you have the contrast of synchronicity and serendipity which is apophenia now apophenia is a is a, is a term to explain these phenomena you know it is the mind, is the, our cognitive processes at works um, un un unconsciously or subconsciously or done intuitively or instinctly. We have to look, you know, there's, the, the, there's a more feasible scientific ex explanation, you know, that, 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 that supports evidence, uh, empirical evidence for, um, for, um, for aprophenia, A-P-O-P-H-E-N-I-A. Back in the historical days, back in our primordial days, Homo sapiens, human being survival mechanism was contingent on our capabilities and our innate abilities to see patterns in things especially here's a primary example when you went hunting when you went hunting you had to develop some form of um, 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 patternic mechanism to find food because you have to search the trail you have to find the trail to find your way home you have to use some form of um, methodological patterns right so this is one of our um, so this ability to see patterns, apophenia, is something that um, has biologically evolved um, in us and become part of our evolutional process. So our ability to see patterns in things and consistency, consistencies in things, right? The term is called apophenia, but I could understand why apophenia doesn't have the sensationalistic appeal as, say, synchronicity does. Because here's the, here's the irony with synchronicity, you know, the sensationalistic appeal that the masses love this. It begs a much bigger question. If there's a cascading chain of events, 
in su succession. There has to be some kind of conceptual scenario that's predicating most of these scenarios. So what is the third party involved? Is, is there some um, extreme external divine intervention that's, that's predicting these scenarios? Are you saying that just your future or life is, is, is preordained? It is part of destiny? You know, a lot of our religious um, fanatics, you know, religiously, they take into consideration that um, nothing hap everything happens for a reason. All these kind of vague, cute concepts, man. It's aprophenia. It's our ability to see patterns and things. And then you have another one called pareidolia. Pareidolia is when we see um, visual patterns and things. You know, um, 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 Aprofenia is seeing conceptual patterns. Like you, all of a sudden you're thinking about a number and you see a person walk by with the same number. That's Aprofenia, right? But we label the term um, um, synchronicity. Um, now, um, one of the reasons... I'll, I'll, here's how a lot of synchronistic scenarios are derived. It is usually derived from most, most coincidental and ironic scenarios. Now, the word coincidence and irony... These two concepts are always used interchangeably, you know, and usually out of context. But that is a com but I think they are mutually uh, exclusive, you know. But that is a completely, completely different subject. But but a lot of synchronistic labels are usually derived from um, coincidental or, or ironic scenarios. But the real case here is um is apophenia. Paradolia is seeing um is looking at the clouds and you see Jesus' face, and all of a sudden you have these um. Um, what's it called? Allegory. Allegory, if you were read the book, The Alchemist, um, it has, allegory is basically when there's a story or a tale, but it has some, these um, uh, underlying um, spiritual, um, sentimental connotations, right? Um, whether it's religious, political, but it has some kind of under meaning, some kind of under meaning, right? So that's what apophenia means, that's what pareidolia means, right? So it's one of our synchronicity. I, I've just, I'm debunking synchronicity, man. Synchronicity is a bunch of vague, stupid bullshit.